Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in mathematics. I hope you've had an awesome, awesome day. Um, I know it's Wednesday, which means that we're actually halfway through the week, which is awesome as well. Um, yeah, so today we're going to start with going through some functions. Well, not start. We actually started in the last lesson going through some functions and looking at different things that would happen. We looked, started the parabola and we had a look at the turning point formula. And the last thing we had to do, well, the last example was this one, where it said draw the following graph showing all intercepts and stating the domain and range. And we were using this turning point formula. What did remember we said? We said that the turning point was given by these values here, this year and this year. Okay, and it works like this, where the turning point would be five, four. Okay, it's the opposite, whatever that sign is and whatever that sign is. And that is the turning point of our graph. So if we had to draw a graph, okay, and I apologize for the squiggly lines. Um, Okay, so the turning point is when x is 5, y is 4. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but 1, 2, 3, 4. And grade 11s, obviously, if you are asked to draw a graph using, not using graph paper like this, you would use a ruler and measure of equal amounts. Okay, obviously, I can't do that in the system, which is why I'm doing it like this. Okay. Now, in order to continue, so this is our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry is when x equals 5, okay? So, which makes me think I need to probably extend this x-axis, but we'll worry about that in a bit. Okay, so now what needs to happen, it's a different red, sorry. So now what needs to happen is that we need to find the x cuts and the y cut. And the best way to do this is actually to multiply this out and get it in its standard form. So let's do that. So we've got y is equal to minus, this squared becomes x squared minus 10x plus 25. Oh, sorry, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, plus 25 plus 4, which becomes minus x squared minus plus 10x minus 25 plus 4 because I've multiplied the minus in. So it becomes minus x squared plus 10x minus 25 plus 4 is minus 21. So therefore it cuts well below, somewhere down here. Okay, it cuts down there. Okay, now we also need to find out where it cuts the x-axis. So what do we need to do? We need to factorize this. So in order to do that, we're going to let y equal naught. Let y equal naught. So we're going to say naught is equal to minus x squared plus 10 minus 21. We can multiply through by negative. So to get naught is equal to x squared minus 10 plus 21. The factors of x are obviously x and x. And we want factors of 21 that add up to 10, okay, and when multiply to give you 21. So our factors of 21 are obviously 21 and 1 and 7 and 3. That's it. So it obviously had to be 7 and 3. So it's minus 7 minus 3, which means it goes through positive and then that's 5, 6, 7. Okay, it wasn't too bad. So therefore, your graph looks okay that mm, so sorry <laughs> okay oh it's gonna raise everything but i'm not very happy with that little point there and those little points there so let's go through it because they need to be kind of equidistant kind okay right let's try again so it goes up we now of course it's worse okay and as I've stated before, my graph drawing on this digital pen and pad is not the best, so I apologize profusely. Okay, so this point here would be 3, and this is 7, and this turning point would be x is 5, y is 4, and we're very cool. So we've got the intercepts. Now we need to talk about the domain and range. Now remember that domain is how far this graph stretches across the x-axis. And do you agree this graph is going to carry on forever and ever and we're going this way? So it's going to stretch, it's going to be slow, going 
getting left, going left because it's very steep. And similarly, it's going to keep on going on and on and on, on over here. So again, it's going to keep going right. So therefore, the domain is just x is an element of real numbers. That's it. You could also write, if you wanted to, that x is smaller than infinity and greater than negative infinity. 4x is an element of real numbers. That would work too. It really doesn't matter how you write that as long as you get the just. I mean, it does matter, but it's, as in it's got to be correct. But either of these methods would be correct. The range is what values the y the y, over the y-axis is this graph valid for. And you can see that the graph ends over here at y equals 5, and it's valid all the way through to negative infinity. But everything above 5, there's no graph. So therefore, to the range, we can say y is an element of real numbers for y has to be smaller than or equal to 5. Or you could say that y is smaller than or equal to 5 and greater than minus infinity for y is an element of real values. Okay, either of those again work. Okay, so there we go. We've drawn the graph. This is probably using what is called the turning point formula. So you could get the turning point. And it's actually a nice formula because otherwise it's a bit difficult. Remember that you can get the turning point because if you had this equation, you can get minus b over 2a and you'll get the equation of the, get the value of the x point of the turning point. In other words, you get your axis symmetry and then you have to substitute back in to get the y value. Right, so now let's talk about the hyperbola. Okay, so what do we know about hyperbola so far? The standard form is y is equal to a over x plus q. Okay, actually, the standard form is y equals a over x. Okay, in other words, that is or xy equals a or k, whatever. That is the actual standard form of the hyperbola. Why I say this is the standard form of the hyperbola? Because this is what you've learned in grade 10, where it can be vertically shifted. Okay, so the effects of a are as follows. Okay. Let's first talk about the effects of Q. If Q is bigger than naught, okay, first, okay, wait, sorry. If Q doesn't exist, okay, then it looks like this. If Q is zero, then the graph is the original graph of Y is equal to A of X, okay? So if that's the case, do you agree that it would be basically either in the second and fourth quadrant or first and third quadrant? We'll tell, talk about Y now. But you'll see that the asymptotes are the x-axis and the y-axis. That's it, x-axis, y-axis. If Q now exists and it's bigger than naught, then what's happened? It's actually moved the graph up. So therefore, its x, its horizontal asymptote is going to have a proper value. Okay, not naught, in other words. Okay, and similarly, if Q is smaller than naught, then you can see the graph has been shifted down, shifted down. Okay, now if A is smaller than naught, then you're always in the second and fourth quadrants, second and fourth quadrants, because those are the negative quadrants. And if A is greater than naught, it means it's positive, and then you're in the first and the third quadrants. And if you're a little bit confused as to why these two would be the positive quadrants and these two would be the negative quadrants, think about this way. If you look at the x and y values, okay? So if we're looking at the x and y values in the second quadrant, do you agree the x values are gonna be negative x and then it's gonna be positive y? And a minus times a plus is a minus. That's why this is negative. Similarly, yeah, do you agree that this is um, negative and this is positive? So this would be x minus y. So again, if you times them, what do you get? You end up with a negative. So therefore, that's why this is effectively thought of as a negative quadrant. These are the negative, whereas if you go in the first quadrant, you've got positive y values and positive x values, x, y. Yeah, you've got negative x values and negative y, but a minus times a minus is a plus. So that's why the first and third quadrants are thought to be positive quadrants and two and four are the negatives. Okay, so now let us draw the graph and label the asymptotes given the domain and range. Now grade 11, so this is actually effectively grade 10 work, okay? We've done this in grade 10, you should know this from grade 10. 
but I need to make sure you do know it so that I can carry on teaching you about other stuff, okay? So first of all, we can see that there is an asymptote here at minus two, so we can draw a dotted line. Yeah, at minus two. Okay. Next, the easiest way to do these is to substitute in values. So it is a positive, which means we're expecting it to be in that quadrant and that quadrant, okay? So all I would do is I would go X and I would draw a little table and go Y. And I personally would put numbers in that actually go into four. So I would go four, two, one, zero, minus one, minus two, minus four. And then all we're gonna do is substitute X into this and find the y values. So let's do that. So if x is 4, we've got 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Okay. Hang on. 4 divided by 4. Okay, never mind. If x is, oh yes, because it's, <laughs> okay, right, it's been shifted. If x is 2, you get 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. If x is 1, you get 4 divided by 1 is 4, minus 2 is 2. If x is 0, you get to the asymptote, okay? Then, if, which is minus 2 because, okay, it's minus 2. But the reason is because you don't have, this goes away, and you end up with minus 2, which is the asymptote, okay? When x is minus 1, we've got 4 divided by minus 1 is minus 4. Minus 2 is minus 6. When x is minus 2, you get 4 divided by minus 2 is minus 2. Minus 2 is minus 4. 4 divided by minus 4 is minus 1. Minus 2 is minus 3. Now, all we have to do is plot these points. So when x is 4, y is minus 1. And I was having a panic attack because I'd forgotten that we'd shifted it. So this is perfectly correct value. If x is 2, y is naught. If x is 1, y is 2. Two. Let's try two. Pen. Two. Okay. So the graph does something like that. And please note it should never touch across the y-axis and never touch the asymptote here, which in this case is y equals minus two. Okay, now let's draw the other half. It's going to be when x is minus one, y is minus six. When x is minus two, y is minus four. And when x is minus four, y is minus three. And again, it's going to look something like that, okay? And again, no touching, okay? So there we go, we've drawn the graph, okay? The asymptotes are, it's labeled asymptotes. This one here, I'll write it nice, is y is equal to minus two, and the other one is x equals zero. Those are your two asymptotes, the x, the y-axis, and the y equals minus two line. Now we need to look at the domain and range. So the domain, Okay, do you agree that the only values this graph does not work for are where x equals naught? Everywhere else, the graph is true. Okay, it carries on forever this way, carries on forever this way until, but it can't cross this x equal naught line. So the domain is going to be x is an element of real values, but x cannot equal naught. Okay. Similarly with the range, the range is true for every y value except which one? For the asymptote, okay, do you agree that this graph does not exist at y equals minus 2? So therefore y cannot equal minus 2. There we go, not too bad, hey? Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, so this is exactly the same type of thing, but now we're looking at the negative version. And again, what I said to you, grade 11s, was that, I, and I'm being honest here, I find a lot of the grade 11s struggle a little bit with graphs in grade 10 and kind of skip up with the hard bits. And then when they get to grade 11 and we need to expand on your knowledge, you've forgotten it, 
or you don't remember it because you kind of skipped over it because it was a bit hard. So what I'm going to do, what I'm doing now is revising stuff that you should already know in grade 10 um, to make sure that you can do the new grade 11 work. Um, it is important you build on the stuff, okay? I know that everybody thinks that grade 12 is your final year and you just need to study grade 12 stuff in order to do well in matric. It's not true. Um, maths officially is considered to be a three-year course. Um, well, actually, unofficially it's a two-year course, but officially, I mean, officially it's a two-year course, but unofficially it's a three-year course, and the same thing for science. So, in other words, what we teach you in grade 10, you need, okay? It's not like, um, yeah, so you can't just skip over it, okay? So, now, y is equal to minus 4 over x plus 2. So, this time the asymptote is plus 2, because we've moved it up by 2. Nice and easy here. So it's quite easy to identify the asymptotes, and that is going to be y is equal to 2. Okay, you'll notice that at the moment we're just talking about vertical shifts. And this is a negative graph, so again, we're going to expect it to be in the second and fourth quadrants. And now what we want to do is again, I want to, I want to do x and y values. So I'm going to go x and y. And we're going to go 4, 2, 1. I'm not going to worry about 0 because 0 is going to give me the asymptote. So I'm going to go straight into minus 1, minus 2, minus 4. Okay. And since it isn't a hyperbola, I would suggest that you do at least a minimum of three points. Okay. Um, if you're worried about the shape and you're worried about getting it right, then yes, feel free to add in more points more values and you don't have to use I use try and use factors or whatever this number is but it's not always necessary you could use any numbers you want okay so when x is 4 we've got minus 4 divided by 4 is minus 1 minus 1 plus 2 is going to be 1 if x is 2 we've got minus 2 plus 2 is 0 when x is 1 we've got minus 4 plus 2 which is minus 2 when x is minus 1, then you end up with 4 plus 2, which is 6. When x is minus 2, you end up with 2 plus 2, which is 4. And when x is minus 4, you get minus 4 divided by minus 4 is 1, plus 2 is 3. So let's plot this. When x is 4, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 0. When x is 1, y is minus 2. Okay, so it goes, oops, it goes like that, but does not touch the asymptote. I apologize. Then when x is minus 1, y is 6. When x is minus 2, y is 4. And when x is minus 3, no, when x is minus 4, y is 3. So, you might be thinking, well, why is she going through this with this? It's so easy and it's so tedious, but it's amazing how my students don't know how to draw hyperbolas. It's shocking, which is why I'm going through this with you. Okay, so now you can see, therefore, that what are your asymptotes? Your asymptotes are obviously the y equals 2 line and the x axis. Okay, so therefore your domain. Do you agree that the only value that this does not exist for is your y-axis, which is the x equals naught, okay? So the domain is going to be x is an element of real values for x does not equal naught. The range is a similar type thing again. y is an element of real values, except for the asymptote where y is equal to 2. So y cannot equal 2 for this graph. Okay. Now, now we are doing some new things, okay? Now we've got y equals a over x plus b plus q, okay? So we've just been doing horizontal, I mean vertical shifts, okay? P's been, Q's been moving it up and down. So obviously, do you agree that P must be doing something to do with the horizontal shift? So this time, they want us to draw f of x equals 1 over x minus 2. Just that. 1 over x minus 2. So we're not looking at a q at the moment. We're just looking at x minus 2. So again, what I'm going to do, I just want to see something. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to do again our table. 
Okay, and we're just going to do, oh, it doesn't matter, we can do x values and we can go, um, okay, let's go, sorry, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, um, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so if we substitute that into this, we get 1 over minus 3 minus 2, which is going to be minus a fifth. Do you agree? It's going to be horrible plotting on this value. Hmm, okay, fine. So if it's minus 3 minus 2, do you agree it's going to be minus a fifth? Okay, 1 over minus a fifth. If x is minus 2, you get 1 over negative a quarter. When x is minus 1, you get 1 over, okay, minus 1 minus 2 is minus a third. If x is naught, what do we get? We get 1 over naught minus 2 is going to be just minus a half. When x is 1, we get 1 divided by 1 minus 2 is minus 1, so it's a negative 1. When x is 2, we get 1 divided by 0, so that is null and void. And when x is 3, we get y is 1. Okay, let's carry on. When x is 4, we get 1 over 4 minus 2, which is going to be Okay, when x is 4, y is going to be a half. When x is 5, y is going to be 1 over 5 minus 2, which is a third. Okay, so obviously these y values aren't going to work for us, okay? So let's pretend that this is minus a fifth, this is minus a fourth, this is, I'm going to do it this way, yeah minus a second, minus third, yeah, minus, no, it's not going to work for me, yeah, that's fine, minus a third, minus a half, and that's going to be minus one, okay, that's not work right at all, <laughs> sorry, I just realized what I was doing, okay, so let's make the whole of this 10 value equal to minus 1. Okay, so let's just try that again, shall we? This is minus 1. Okay, that's minus 1. Forget about all these values. Okay, this is minus 1. So therefore, that goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yep, that's minus 1. Okay, and let's make this lot here be 1. Okay, so now when x is minus 3, we've got minus a fifth. Okay, so minus a fifth is going to be what in decimals? Okay, do you agree that that is going to be negative 0, 2? Okay, this is negative 0, 2, 5. This is negative 0, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. This is negative 0, 5, and this is negative 1. Okay, that makes it a little bit easier for you to understand what we're doing. Because then what happens is when x is minus 3, Okay, when x is minus 3, y is going to be minus 0, 2, which is sitting over here. This is negative 0, 2. So therefore, x is going to be there. When x is minus 2, y is minus 0, 2, 5, which is over here. When x is minus 1, y is minus a third, which is minus 0, 0.3. Hmm. Plot it wrong. Got it. Okay. There is a third. And I mean, there, and then, then when x is minus 1, y is minus a third. Okay, 0 0.3. And then when x is 0, y is minus 0 0.5. You with me? When x is 1, y is minus 1. It's down here. So this graph is doing that. Okay. The asymptote is at x equals 2. That's the new asymptote when x equals 2. Okay, x equals 2. Now, when x is 3, y is 
1. Okay, when x is 3, y is 1. When x is 4, y is a half, so it's going to be about over there. When x is 5, y is going to be a third, which is about over there. So this graph is doing that. Okay, so I apologize about the graph. Okay, but do you understand what's happened? What has happened is that this graph is being shifted over it's been shifted over so to the right, okay? So the x minus 2 has moved it over to the right, okay? Now they want us to draw the g of x is equal to x plus 1. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this bit, okay? Um... And then we're going to see what happens to these values now. Okay, so let's just change the pen color. It doesn't matter. Black, black, black. There we go. So now, when x is minus 3, we get 1 over minus 3 plus 1, which is going to be minus a half. So this is minus a half. When x is minus 2, y is going to be 1 over minus 2 plus 1 is 1 over minus 2 plus 1, which is 1 over minus 1, which is just negative 1. When x is minus 1, do you agree that that doesn't happen? Because minus 1 plus 1 is 0, so it doesn't happen. So that's your asymptote. That there is your asymptote. When x is 0, y is 1. When x is 1, y is a half. When x is 2, y is a third. Okay, you get it. So now if I had to plot on that, we'd have now our asymptote this time is over here. Okay, so do you see the plus 1 has moved the graph to the left? And then what happens if we've got x equals minus 3, we've got y is minus a half, so which is 0 0.5, over there. And when x is minus 2, y is minus 1 again. So the graph is going to be moved over like this, okay? Whereas here, the graph is going to be when x is 0, y is 1. So now it's going through the y-axis. So do you see what's different here? This time the graphs are going through the y-axis. If we look at the previous graph, do you see that it could cross the x-axis, but there would be a horizontal asymptote, okay? Yeah, it doesn't cross the x-axis. The x-axis is still an asymptote, okay? But it can now cross the y-axis and it's being moved left to right. Okay, so minus moves it right and positive moves it left. So that's what we're looking at with effects of P and Q. And again, guys, I know this looks terribly scary. So I'm going to talk you through it nice and slowly. And what I would say to you guys is that if you want to make sure you understand how hyperbolas work with their, with their different positions, then you really, really need to know how this works, okay? So the easiest way to do this is to compare like with like. So let's pretend that P is greater than 0. So if we first need to just, sorry, just let me check something for you. Um, remember that this is your equation. Y is equal to A over X plus P plus Q. And I'm going to write it down Yeah, Y is equal to A over X plus P plus Q. Okay, so now we're saying, okay, remember that this does the gradient, this influences the gradient, this is your horizontal shift, and this is the vertical shift. So messing with Q is pretty easy, because if Q is bigger than naught, what is happening? The graph is going up, right? If Q is smaller than naught, the graph is going down. Okay, that's pretty easy. So the horizontal ones we don't have to worry about anymore, okay, because we know that when Q goes up, Q is greater than naught, the graph is shifted up. If Q is smaller than naught, the graph is shifted down. Okay, now let's look at if A is bigger than naught, okay, and P is bigger than naught. If A is bigger than naught, when you're using quadrants 1 and 3, right, positive and you'll notice that if p is bigger than naught in other words it's a positive value then it's been shifted left okay do you see that it's shifted left whereas 
and yeah, if don't worry about that. Okay, so that's what's happened. All that you need to see is it shifted left. Whereas if A is smaller than naught, then they're going to be in column two and I mean group oh, quadrants two and four, but we still shifted left. Same thing here. We don't worry about the Qs up and downs because we know about them. If P is smaller than naught, in other words, if it's a negative, what is happening? We shifted to the right. So it's left to the negative negative I always think negative left negative left right is positive okay so positive is the right okay so we shift it to the right and then a just tells you that it's going to be in the first and the third quadrant if it's bigger than naught and if it's all naught it's in the second and fourth quadrant okay so again it seems confusing but you know what the best thing to do with it is to actually think of it like this where we go okay y is equal to a over x plus p plus q and that's exactly what i would do i would go okay let's look at the whole of this is this positive or negative it's positive great then i know that it's in if i had to do it like this so for example let's say we've got y is equal to 2 over x minus 3 plus 4. It's just for example. Okay, this is positive. Cha-ching, cha-ching, I know it's in those two quadrants, okay? Right, now, what else do I know? Plus 4 means it's been moved up. Minus 3 minus negative is to the, oh, sorry. Um, sorry, this is p is greater than 0. Sorry, it's positive goes to the, left okay positive goes to the left that's what i wrote here why did i write negative the positive goes to the left okay positive goes left so minus goes to the right minus goes to the right you can think of it this way in order to cancel that out x has to get bigger so therefore x minus three goes to the right there you go okay so that's how i do these things is i actually analyze and see where it's going so i look at this and i go oh look plus four okay so if it's going up plus four there's my asymptote to ching minus three means it's going off to the right to ching okay and two means it's going to be over there and it's going to do something like that okay that looks a bit confusing here okay let's do an example it's probably the easiest way okay so let's go through an example make sure you guys understand it says draw the following graph showing all the asymptotes and determine the domain and range okay so first of all we know that this is positive plus two so it's going up and my first asymptote i'm going to do is a nice easy one it's plus two going across okay Right, so that is y equals 2. Okay, that's my first asymptote. Now let's worry about this x plus 1. The plus 1 means what? Okay, if we go back up, if p is greater than 0, it means we've been moved to the left. Okay, so if it's positive, it's moved to the left. So therefore, if it's plus 1, it's going to be over here. So that's my vertical asymptote. And another way of thinking about it is, when would this equal zero? So you can go x plus one equals zero. Therefore, this is going to be zero at x equals minus one. So that's my asymptote. C, not too bad, eh? Okay, right. So let's just erase this because I need the space. Okay, and now all that we need to do is plot some points. Okay, so we know that since this is a positive graph, it's going to be in the first and in the third quadrants. It's going to move over a little bit into the second quadrant because it's been shifted and it's obviously going to move a little bit over in the second quadrant again because it's been shifted but effectively it's in these two quadrants okay so now what we need to do is plot some points so what we can do is again we're going to go x and y and obviously we can't just look at factors of two that's not going to work for me so let's do i don't know um Okay, let's do x equals minus, okay, minus, oh, sorry, minus 2, minus 1, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, and see how we do with that. Okay, so when x is minus 2, actually let's go a bit back further sorry I just realized that this graph is probably going to extend a little bit further this way so I actually need to go back a bit so we're going to go 
minus 4, minus 3. Okay, and these are the x values and these are the y values. Okay, when x is minus 4, do you agree we get 2 over minus 4 plus 1 plus 2? So it becomes 2 over minus 3 plus 2, okay, which becomes, what is that? That's 1 and a third. So that's 1 and a third. Yes, 1 and a third. When x is minus 3, we get 2 over minus 3 plus 1 plus 2. So therefore it becomes minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2. So we get 2 over minus 2 plus 2, which becomes minus 1 plus 2, which is just 1. So that's 1. When x is minus 2, we get 2 over minus 2 plus 1 plus 2. Guys, you don't have to show this working. I'm just showing it to you so that you can see what I'm doing, okay? So we ended up with 2 over minus 1 plus 2, which becomes minus 2 plus 2, which is 0, okay? When x is minus 1, yes, we get 2 over minus 1 plus 1. Does that work? No, it does not. So therefore, this here is an asymptote, which we knew anyway. So that is an asymptote, okay? When x is naught, y is 2 divided by 1, which is 1, plus 2 is 4. When x is 1, you got 2 divided by 2 is going to be 1 plus 2 is 3. When x is 2, you get 2 divided by 3, which is 2 thirds plus 2 is 2 and 2 thirds. And when x is 3, you get 2 over 4, which is a half, so it's 2 and a half. Okay, so now we need to plot this. So it says when x is minus 4, y is 1 and a third. So it's going to be over here somewhere. When x is minus 3, y is going to be 1. When x is minus 2, y is 0. And then, so basically our graph does something like that. Okay, please feel free to draw a much neater graph and use a pencil. Okay, when x is naught, y is 4. Okay, so you can see it cuts the y-axis now. So do you see it's cutting the x-axis at minus 2 and it's cutting the y-axis at 4? Okay, and that's important because you can they often ask you where it cuts the x cuts and y cuts are when they're asking you to draw these graphs. And also you'll notice that that's important because that isn't what normally happens with a hyperbola. Okay, then when x is 1, y is 3. When x is 2, y is 2 and 2 thirds. When x is 3, y is 2 and a half. Okay, you get the gist. So it does that and it never touches or crosses this. Okay, so that's pretty cool, okay? So now you can see it's been shifted up and it's been shifted left, okay? So if we had to determine the domain and range, the domain, remember, is everything to do with x. It'd be x is an element of real values for x does not equal what? It does not equal minus one. It cannot be equal to the asymptote of x equals minus one. The range, same thing, it's got y as an element of real values, but y does not equal 2, because that's an asymptote. Okay, so I hope you're starting to understand how to do these. And it is a bit tedious to plot the points, but um, usually when they ask you to do this in the exam, they'll ask you to state name one point. So you don't quite have to do quite as many points. I'm doing this many points to kind of give you an idea of what to do. You obviously don't need to do this many points because we kind of know the direction we're going with this, okay? Right, so now they've asked us to draw the following graph, okay? Okay, and I see that it's basically time is up. So what I'd like you to do, grade 11s, is I would like you to take a snapshot or a screenshot of this question put it on your, um, try it, okay, and today is Wednesday, so I do math with you guys again on Monday, so try it and see how you do, and then come back on Monday and see if you got it right. Okay, hope you have a great day. Cheers.